And I got to take my wife and children to Vienna, Austria, when Donna was the first lady of Austria. And, and we got to do waltz lessons and all kinds of very cool things. Um, first of all, I'm glad I got to just hear the tail end of this fascinating conversation. Um, the whole notion of food as medicine uh, is an incredibly powerful one, especially when you look at, at how much now we are linking cancers to obesity. When you figure that up to 3% of the 17% we spend on healthcare is due to obesity. Um, understanding food deserts and the role of fruits and vegetables in our lives and the like, really, really important. Um, and also, I, I just got appointed to the Ways and Means Committee, which is a bigger deal than I actually realized when I was raising my hand for it. But we had our first uh, hearing last week, which lasted five hours, on preserving the waiver of pre-existing conditions protections. Uh, and the most powerful testimonies were from people who were cancer survivors who said that is always going to be a pre-existing condition. Let's make absolutely sure that what other health insurance regimes we promote, make sure we take care of folks that have had that as a pre-existing condition. Um, I just wanted to do three quick things. Number one is my life continues to be filled with stories of people who have contracted cancer and had tre tremendous outcomes. I think I told you last year that five years ago when I was still in Switzerland, uh, a friend wrote and said her husband uh, was just recommended to go to hospice with his stage four multiple myeloma. And when I set him up on a hiking trip in Switzerland, um, which he did the whole oat route from Chamonix to Zermatt. Um, and now five years later, he's cancer free. He's been done 500 miles on the Appalachian Trail with me. We're going again next month. Um, my favorite nephew who runs our Subaru store, his wife contracted, was diagnosed with um, I'm not kind of sure something it was, it was a breast cancer, although they did surgery on her, her, her hip and her bones and none on her breast. And they gave her, she apparently tested positive for three different types of genetic abnormalities. They gave her the right medicines. She's cancer free, back at work, doing great, et cetera, et cetera. Um, my, my favorite cousin is head of the genetics lab at Harvard. And every time he comes to town, we sit and talk to him. And he talks about the breakthroughs that are coming virtually every day on understanding not only how to treat cancer, but how to diagnose it earlier and earlier and earlier. So the most important thing I, thing I want to say is in my new role in Ways and Means Committee, my favorite piece of legislation that I will be championing, hopefully in a very bipartisan way, is a 10-year commitment to 4% research increase dollars for NIH, for the National Science Foundation, all across every single year. Because my friends at the National Science Foundation, NIH, and others say there are more excellent research projects than ever before, and we are funding an ever smaller percentage of them. Because the dollars go up, the dollars go down, it's completely unpredictable. And yet we know that when we make the investment in the research, really, really good things happen. So thank you for being part of this wonderful community that continues to push us in the right direction. And I hope I get invited back next year. Thank you very much. <laughs>